want to thank you for coming today. My name is Dave Dillon, and I'm the Executive Director for Oregon Farm Bureau. You may or may not know what Oregon Farm Bureau is. Uh, it's the agricultural group that sounds like a government agency, but we're not a government agency. You know, we just have Bureau in our name. So we're a membership organization, uh, started in Oregon in 1919. Uh, we are we have members in all 36 counties of Oregon, uh, all of the 250 plus commodities that are produced here. We have members that grow or raise each of those. We represent farmers and ranchers from the smallest to the largest, from the most biodynamic or organic to the most high tech, and kind of everything in between. Our job, really, for our members is um, comes in two parts. One part of that job, job one, is advocacy in the public policy arena on behalf of our members. So the legislative process, sometimes in the courts, a lot of times with agencies, will be working on behalf of, uh, of growers to make sure their interests are represented and that the policymakers are aware of the needs that you have as growers. Job two for us is helping our members know what the rules are, know what the laws are, and know what they need to do so they can be in compliance with those rules and laws. So that's really our purpose today, is that second part of our job, is to help you navigate and help you understand a little bit better about some of the policy perspectives that agencies have, state representative will have, and some of the other agricultural groups will have as we all kind of embark in this new era together. It's really an unprecedented moment in Oregon history. I don't think we've ever had a regulatory change that affects so many people in such a way in such a short period of time. Um, as those who are in this uh, area, or those who are considering being in this area, I know this is a time that's probably frustrating for you. You're trying to plan a business, you're trying to plan investment, you're trying to figure out what you need to do in the marketplace, but you're also trying to figure out what are, what are the rules? What, what, where is that map that I can follow to know what I need to do to be in compliance? And so we understand that difficulty and hopefully you'll have a little better feeling for what that map looks like uh, as you leave today. Um, on that note, I would say you're gonna be hearing from several different, uh, I think six um, state agencies. I just ask that you try to give those folks uh, a little bit of slack. If you can imagine, they're trying, taking on the huge job of trying to implement not only a ballot measure, but then all of the legislative overlays that have happened earlier this year um, to try to clarify different elements of that. So they're scrambling and they're doing their best to implement those policies in a way that's wise and that will serve us all over the long term. I know you'd rather have everything certain and known now. Um, and sorry, we, we're not quite there. We're getting close. Um, I'll just talk about a couple of logistical issues. I need to thank um, two sponsors. We have two law firms that are represented in the lobby outside here. Uh, Davis Wright Tremaine and uh, Dunn Carney. So if you're looking for uh, uh, capable lawyers, uh, those are two of the firms that uh, I think you'll find good representation in. Um, we're trying to cram in an awful lot of information in a three hour period. So we're probably not gonna have uh, questions at most of the sessions, there may be a couple of the speakers that the content they have allows some time for questions. So that'll just be on a speaker by speaker basis. But hopefully you all picked up an agenda when you came in. On the back side of that agenda is a list of all the presenters you're gonna see today and contact information. We wanna make sure that when you have questions that aren't answered today, you know where to go and how to ask to get the information that you need. Similarly, at the bottom of that is a, a web address. And at that web address, we're going to be posting all the information that's presented today. And some of the presenters have actually included more uh, material than what they're going to present. So the website at the, at the bottom there, we'll leave it up. Um, we'll still be adding some things over the next week or two. And so hopefully that's a good resource as you're, as you're thinking about uh, what you experienced today. The last thought I'd like to leave you with is if you imagine the diversity of the state of Oregon and our population, our geography, certainly in the agricultural arena. I mean, there are maybe only one or two other states that has the, uh, that have the diversity of crop production. We have 250 plus commodities grown here. Um, in that kind of environment, there's a lot of opportunity for conflict and disagreement. And I think in the cannabis world, in this last legislative session, you might have seen a little bit of that, even among people in that family between, you know, industrial hemp and medicinal and recreational. Um, 
you know, our goal is that agriculture sticks together, agriculture works together, talks to each other, and is proactive about solving its own conflicts within, within our own kind of community. So um, you'll hear a little bit more about that in one of the panels later. But um, in that vein, uh, one of the groups that uh, Oregon Farm Bureau works most closely with is Oregon Association of Nurseries. Between the two groups, we have about 170 years of experience advocating uh, for growers in Oregon. And the legislative point person uh, on these issues for OAN is Elizabeth Rimley, and she'll talk to you a little bit about that organization. So welcome and thanks for coming.